It's our third day at sea, and I couldn't have asked for a better start to our trip. So far, our crew has experienced the tranquility of sailing on flat seas, took a dip in the largest swimming pool in the world, and flew underwater like a manta ray. And even the rarest of all occasions, going up the mast under sail. We've sailed Delos around 80,000 nautical miles so far, spending well over 500 days at sea, and I can say with certainty that days like these are few and far between. As another incredible day draws to a close, pockets of squalls begin to appear around us. These ominous clouds could only mean one thing. Rain, and under the most beautiful pink, silhouetted skies. some rest? Yes. <laughs> Did you sleep through your alarm? Yeah. Well, my alarm didn't go off. There's a difference. <laughs> uh, the sailing is really, really, really good. Um, there's a line of squalls in front of us, but they are just sort of moving across us. But it's uh, changed the wind angle, so it's brought the wind angle up a little bit. And it's also increased the wind speed by about like a few knots, not too much, but I think they're going to pass by, and it's a beautiful night to hand steer. Uh oh, Ooh. Yeah, are you up for the task? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're going to do this. You're going to, you're not going to regret this. I'll just let you get a feel for it real quick. Okay. But like, what I find is really helpful uh -huh. is instead of looking at like the numbers, yeah. like the heading and the compass and stuff. Just pick like a couple of stars or like a constellation or something. And then I put them like on either side of like that stay or kind of in the middle of the mast and the shroud. But sometimes I put one like right below the flag and I just keep it there. Oh. And just uh, make like small little turns. I'm trying to pick this. And then you'll get the feel for it. You could, this steering has like a lot of feedback. Yeah. So yeah. you can feel like the waves and you can feel the way the boat is sailing. But then like every okay. few minutes, you can just check your course, but don't, don't even like look at it very often. Okay. Let's see. How does it feel? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so cool. In a man's It's so, it's even cooler. It's like, Bioluminescence. Yeah, do you catch it every once in a while? You can see it. I just saw a shooting star. Yeah. That I saw one so a little while ago, too. What the heck? It's all the stuff that we miss because we normally don't stare at the sky, right? Yeah. But now, I'm not you're just staring at the sky. And that's your whole entire job. <laughs> so enjoy that. It is officially the start of day four, and we're sailing around really smoothly. Um, really, really awesome that I got to hand steer for the first time this morning. Instead of looking at the electronics like I usually would, I learned how to pick a cluster of stars and constellations to focus on, 
and make headway towards that. And I thought that was so cool. Conditions are definitely different today. We have like kind of reef both in the jib and the uh, mainsail just to kind of smooth us out a little bit. We were healing a lot this morning. <laughs> like not so much for us, but mostly for Sierra to just feel comfortable and that she can kind of move around a little bit by herself. Uh, not going super fast, but it's quite comfortable and I think everybody's pretty out of it. Brian was really tired. He was up like so much during the night because of all of the squalls. Did you have any squalls in your water? Yeah, I think it was like the start of it. It had one big squall, um, but like it kind of dispersed and then headed to our port. But I think the wind was still coming at us, so it hit from like 12 knots to I think it was, I think the highest was like 22. Oh wow. It was crazy. And then like the mizzen was like. We've probably got with the parent wind up into the 20s now. We've got our full sails out. Okay, that's good. That's our first reef. God. Hey, what's up, Tay? How's it going? Not much. We got some wind. I hear some stuff going on. Yeah. It's damn light, we're reefing. Um, and that's what woke Brian up, and he, then yeah. he came out and kind of helped me out. But it was a little nerve wracking. Yeah, I think yeah. everybody has like squall. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's kind of tired today. Yeah. <laughs> I know Brian is. But it's a beautiful day though. Yeah. Like, it turned out to be super beautiful out here. gonna do it we're gonna do it today we promise I'm gonna teach you guys how to use this real quick and then everybody can start doing sightings right now and then we'll figure it out from there so this is our cheapo plastic sextant this is a sextant and it's been used for centuries to plot one's position using celestial objects early navigation instruments date back to the 13th century but the introduction of the sextant in the early 18th century was a revolution in navigation. The sextant's design allows you to measure a celestial body relative to the horizon. This coupled with accurate timekeeping made it the GPS of its day. Sometimes learning to use a sextant can feel more like art than science. But with a little practice and a lot of fun, you can learn pretty quickly. And I was looking forward to showing the girls some old school tech. And we're going to be doing what's called a noon sight today. And so the whole idea of this apparatus is to measure a distance between 
uh, celestial body and the horizon. And so in this case, we're gonna be measuring the distance between the horizon and the sun at a specific time, which is noon. You know, we're like here on the ocean and the sun is kind of going like this across the sky, right? Until it reaches a point and then it starts to go down again. And this highest point, which would be right here, That's would noon. be high, our high noon. high noon, our local noon. And so what the idea is, we want to measure the angle between the sun and the horizon at high noon. So we're going to be taking measurements like here, 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 here. So you want to hold it like this, you want to hold it up. And what it actually has is it has this mirror. So one of the mirrors is going to be pointed up at the sun. Your eyesight is going to be pointed straight at the horizon. And so what you want to do is you want to get it so that you can see the horizon and then you want the sun just so that the bottom of the sun touches the bottom of the horizon. There. Right, so you just slowly move this until the sun comes down to the horizon and when you think you have it you kind of do like like this because it'll cause the sun to go in an arc and if at the bottom of the arc the sun just touches the horizon you know that then you have it like perfect and it'll take some practice no pressure or anything but we're lost at sea and if you don't get this we'll never get there well looks like we're screwed then i can't see the sun anymore Okay, I can't see the sun anymore. I lost the sun. Does that mean I have to move this? Yep. <laughs> After a little practice, everyone started to get the feeling for it. Yell it out real loud. Mark! Mark! Okay, 04-1701. 04-1701. Each time we take a measurement or a sighting, we know two things. We know the angle and we know the, the time, uh, preferably the UTC or, or Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, 70 degrees, 10 minutes. And the reason why we do that is the easiest measurement to figure out is uh, your, your longitude, longitude, which is the difference between us and uh, Greenwich, England. Like, let's say we reach high noon at 8 a.m. UTC. And based on that particular time, we can determine exactly how far from zero longitude we are just on the time of high noon. And then with the angle, we then can put that into a formula and then we can determine with uh, like a reduction sheet our latitude, which is the north and south. So that's the simple, simple, simple version. There's a lot more to it, but it's actually not that hard. And it's pretty fun. Uh, you guys ready? Uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> Straight over my head. Past my skill set. It's not that hard. It's pretty easy. So the math wins. Even the nugs can do it. If she stopped watching George. It's a little difficult, okay. isn't it? I think I got it. You got it? Mark. Hi. Okay. Mark. 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 So now we should do it like every five minutes because we're getting a little bit closer. Mark! Ah. 045752. 85! So, let's take a look at our measurements. So we started out at 79, and then we ended up 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 85, 85, 85, 87, 86, 86, 85. So to me, it would seem like, you know, obviously the boat is moving and we're kind of like amateurs at this, <laughs> but our high point of 87 would make sense, right? Because we're kind of climbing, 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 and now it's going down three measurements in a row. Mm -hmm. So, we could say that our high noon would be 05-27-35 UTC, our best guess. And so now we can use this to calculate some stuff. Could have put this all mouth? into a formula or something? And a then formula or something? Beep, 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 beep. All right, so after doing some mathematical calculations on our device, 
and then adding the correction from the correction tables for the date. We've come up with, if our time is somewhat correct, we've come up with a uh, longitude of 82, 29.7 west. So what are we actually at? 36.2. So we're a little bit off, 1.8 degrees off. It's not bad. Let's do the latitude real quick. 24, 58. Oh yeah, that's way off. <laughs> what did we do? You said 22? I said 22, I have to check my math. Ahoy Delos tribe. Are you looking for a special gift for that salty sailor in your life? Our fantastic Budaman sail has powered us through some of the hardest ocean sailing there is. And we couldn't think of a more fitting retirement than to upcycle it into these high quality Dacron bags. Each bag is built tough to withstand a sailor's abuse and features a real piece of the Budaman sail that has sailed tens of thousands of ocean miles, personally signed by us. Quantities are limited, so if you'd like to own a piece of Delos history, Check out svdelos.com forward slash sale bags and grab yours today. Do it, Nugs. Do it. Do a pull up. You do a pull up with me? Did JC teach you pull ups? Oh, baby muscles. Baby Nooks, we're sailing. Get your hairs blowing in the wind. How about you, Jade? How are you doing? Pretty good. I'm working on this shorts tan line I got going on. Get rid of that tan line. <laughs> I'm glad we're finally sailing. It makes things more entertaining. We're ripping along right oh, yeah. now. Oh, yeah. we got We've got 15 crazy. knots of winds. We're jamming. We're going pretty south, though. Yeah, our course kind of got screwed. It turns southeasterly again. It should be easterlies right now. We're sailing kind of conservatively just because of Sierra. You know, like I don't want the boat to heel over too much or get too crazy with the swells and waves. So I've reefed it down. I'm trying to keep the speed under six knots, which means we won't jump over the next wave in front of us, which is fine. I mean, we don't need to push the boat all the time and seven knots is just enough speed. That's fine. Uh, but things are going good. I think we've got 140 miles in, until our next turn when we get around pirate banks here. and. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll hit that tomorrow. Although our course has become a little bit screwed today because the wind suddenly shifted by about 30 degrees. And right there, we just got nailed and it just, you know, the wind just shifted that much to where now that's our track. So now we're, instead of making any easting, we're losing a little bit now. We're actually making a little bit of uh, west and mostly south, but um, yeah, I hope it changes. Otherwise, I don't know what we're gonna do tomorrow. We're gonna have to figure something out. Here, <laughs> I feel a deja vu coming. <laughs> no, I'm um, just making some dinner and I'm gonna try to make some risotto. Mm. But I do the risotto in the pressure cooker and it only takes seven minutes. Oh wow! Yeah, it's, mm. it's pretty, it's like a one pot meal, which I like. Those are the best for when you're underway. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to that. And what's going on over here? Oh, trying to figure out what's going on with the weather. So it, now it's like 114 true, so the wind is sort of like east-southeast, which is really screwing us. So we've got the weather that we're battling against because we're trying to make easting to get around the pirate shoals, but it's not cooperating. We've also got this current to deal with, so we're like right here, right now. And so I wrote down these marks, kind of the edge of this current. Mm -hmm. So that I can make sure that we don't sail into that because that would really suck. Yeah. Um, Push us even more the way that we don't want to go. Exactly. 
And so, I don't know what the right thing is to do. Probably the right thing to do is to either tack or motor sail out and make mm -hmm. a little bit more easting. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think, it doesn't look like we're gonna get a wind shift. Okay, preparing to tack. Crews all over it. Lots of parmesan. Not parmesan. It's hot. It's going to be very hot. Oh my gosh. Mm. Is it okay? It is really good. Thank you, Gaza. I redid my mathematics. I found my problem. This is the sexy Human thing. computer <laughs> recalculated. That's <laughs> the position that we measured was 18 degrees 56 minutes north, 80 degrees 36 minutes west. Our actual position was 18 degrees 33 north, 80 44 west. And so we were about 20, 26 miles off. But it's pretty good considering it was everybody's first time doing it and everybody was doing different. like different sightings and so if one person were to do it and he practiced and we weren't using plastic sex tape, uh we should be able to get like within like before we were able to get within 10 miles when we did it so I think like 30 miles is pretty good like if you were lost you could probably find your way somewhere somewhere oh yeah. uh, so nice job Up next on Delos, the winds pick up as we prepare to blast our way through the pirate shoals off the coast of Honduras and Nicaragua. Uh, Kaz and I were doing some research and over the last couple of years there's been numerous incidents of boardings and thefts, uh, mostly within 100 miles of the coast. I turned off the AIS, AIS is now in like silent mode, uh, and also lights, so we're gonna run at night, we're gonna be dark. So, so like everybody should choose a weapon. Prepare to be boarded, my team! <laughs> do it, Doug. Do it. Do a pull up. You do a pull up with me? Did JC teach you pull ups? I've got a fish! I've got a fishy! I don't know if that's an edible fish. You guys are a team. Oh. Okay, that's a good workout for the day. Yeah. Give me some foot fetish photos in there for some weirdos. I won last night, so I won three times in a row, and and then I finally gave Brian a win just so that his ego would be. I, I took that win, and your streak is broken, cribbage queen. You're on, you're on well, the you're on the way out. Well, I'm on the way up. You like to think it's that. It's a revolutionary day. I like to like think that. Mm -hmm. Nice try though. Yep.